oh my goodness, there's lots and lots of talking going on in the chat already. Um, welcome. I have not done a live over here for some time. And um, I have some news, I have some news that um, kind of been figuring out the right time to share. And uh, tonight's the night. Tonight's the night I'm going to share. But it's not, okay, let me just put to rest. Like the animals are fine and the kids are fine. Uh, it, you know, that, well, except for my angelfish. I did lose my angelfish yesterday. No, but the, the animals are doing great. Um, I moved Goody yesterday. Goody is now home. And there will be a new video coming up on the uh, niche lady critter cam that where I kind of documented that whole thing going on there. So you'll be able to see Goody's new home here at the uh, the Ackerman Zoo. <laughs> and Eileen is doing great. And all the tortoises are finally down and sleeping for the winter. We had one holdout. Shelly just kept popping up. I'm like, what are you doing, girl? Uh, so, but she's finally down and sleeping. I also want to say, I don't know if any of my Tennessee peeps are on, but I just briefly was glancing through some things and saw that Tennessee's getting hit with tornadoes again. So I am uh, definitely saying a prayer for all of those in Tennessee that are in the paths. And I, I hope, I hope that uh, the only thing lost is maybe a building or two, if that. Indeed, indeed. Welcome in, everybody. Thank you so much. I want to start out by saying um, it's going to be an emotional night. I just want to start out by saying those of you who uh, constantly are just leaving positive, kind, supportive, fun comments after my videos. And when I do these lives, I just want you to know how much that means to me and that I absolutely read every single one. I wish there was enough hours in the day to write a personal message back to every one of you, but please know that uh, I am reading those and they do mean the world to me. Um, it really actually is what is what keeps me going because this YouTube life uh, is nothing that anybody can prepare you for. Like, you know, people might tell you what it's going to be like when you start putting your life <laughs> out on video and then tens of thousands of people start watching and, and being involved. And uh, then you might go, eh, no, that's no. Um, but it's interesting. It's very interesting. And um, this year in particular has been a really, really heavy learning curve for me, um, which I'll get into in a moment. Um, but I really, really want you guys to know that your comments don't they don't go into thin air. I absolutely, I lay in bed in the morning and I read comments. And usually it's the last thing I do at night is I read comments and, you know, I heart and comment to as many as I possibly can. Um, but know that each and every one gets read. And you'll probably notice there's, there's some comments in there that uh, are not from the supportive people. And um, honestly, that's one of the biggest things I had to learn going into YouTube. And I had some incredible people who were already at the place where I was aspiring to be, who told me how to handle things, who I didn't exactly do it right in the beginning. Um, <laughs> but they were like, you know, do not, do not let that stuff get under your skin. Do not pay it any heed. These are people who are just miserable with their life. And if they weren't leaving it on your video, they'd be leaving it on somebody else's video because that's just what they do. And that, that is really true. I don't, I don't let those things get to me anymore. There was a time where I was like, oh my gosh, how many people are thinking the same thing? Oh my gosh. <laughs> you know, and it really, really, really used to get to me. 
Yes, the equalizer. I'm really live tonight. I know I haven't <laughs> I haven't done this for a while. Um But so so YouTube in and of itself has just been it has been uh how do I say it? It's uh it's been life-changing. It's truly been life-changing. Um and it's and it's been like it's it's had to i don't want to say change me but change the way that i deal with and react to things and to people and all of that and this year in particular has been a year of actually having to learn to prioritize uh my family better um those around me that um that i am responsible for uh, more because it's also taught me that there's like, there's some real evil in this world. Um, I, for the last, what month is it? Uh, for the, about the last nine months or so, I have been dealing with a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. Um, a lot of it had to do with the good stuff thrift store and you know, some things that happened there. Um, and then over the course of the last several months, and I've made some videos about this too. I have, uh, <laughs> I have had a, a campaign out there to do harm to my business, to my family, um, to my way of life. And um, it's been challenging, but we have been able to overcome pretty much everything. I mean, we were talking things like, you know, I, I put out the doxing video. Um, so like our personal safety was put in jeopardy. Um, I've had animal control called on me falsely. I have, I have had multiple, multiple, uh, Complaints filed with the city against my business. Um, it just, it's just been, it's just been a, like a, it's been a long, it's been a long year. <laughs> I will say that. Um, and through all of this, I have, um, I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot about people. I'm a really, really trusting person. Uh, it's to a fault. You know, I, I let everybody in. And um, I probably overshare and give too much of my personal life. And, I, and I've had to really learn, like, I, I have to be more guarded, um, not just for me, but, you know, for the safety of those around me. And um, so that's why you haven't seen a home tour and you haven't, you know, seen some of these things that I would have, like, done in a heartbeat before, um, just because I have to be so much more careful you know, even like answering some questions in, in, you know, chat and comments, I have to be careful because there are people out there who wish harm. And I don't think that's anything that's going to go away. Like that is the world we live in now is there is the ability for people to do such things. Like it gets rewarded. It's rewarded behavior. Um, but I've also found out that, um, we, we still have a, a really good system in place. Um, I never thought I'd say this, you know, but you know, I'm dealing with the FBI and, and law enforcement and um, it's, it's been good. It's been, it's been good. Uh, I feel much safer now. Uh, things have been relaxed. They haven't gone away, but they've been relaxed. Um, now being said, I can't, there's some details I just can't give of like still what's in place in order to protect things. But, but yeah, so it's been, it's been a year. <laughs> I will just say that it is, I'm ready for 2023 to be over. How about you guys? I mean, and I have talked to a lot of people and I know 2023 has, has been a challenging year. Um, we thought 2020 was, was the rough one and it was home free after that. No. And, um, my heart is in serving people. My heart is in 
taking everything that I've been through in my life and how can I use that to lift somebody else up? That is, that is my course. What I'm about that is never going away. Uh, I feel truly blessed to be in the position I am now to have been blessed with a YouTube channel that YouTube sees fit to, to send out there and bring people in to watch. So uh, I, I can meet new people and learn about you guys and, and see what it is I can bring to the table that can help others, especially as we are, we are going through some really ridiculous economical times and, and reselling has always been my lifeblood, like reselling from the time, from the time I could resell, I've been a reseller. And there have been people in my life that have helped me, who've given me information, who've, who've gotten me to this point I'm at. So, so that is what I'm all about. And a year ago, a year and a couple months ago, I thought, hey, I can do something even bigger and more special and we can really blow this up and make this something cool. And I rented a building and I opened the Good Stuff Thrift Store. And the Good Stuff Thrift Store uh, was a way for me to not just put money in my pocket by opening a store, because I could have done that. I could have opened a little boutique somewhere, just sold my own stuff, you know, happy life, right? Um, but I decided that I wanted to bring others into that with me. And so I, I opened the good stuff. And for those that may be new and, and not know, so it is a, a thrift shop co-op. And what that means is I brought on nonprofits as consigners. So it's a consigner foundation business model, but all of the consigners are nonprofits. So they bring in the donated goods and then we process and do all the work and man the store. We sell, they get a check every quarter. And, and I think it's still a really, really great business model. Uh, the problem is I rented a building that has a few issues, uh, and I have been fighting the good fight for over a year with this property management. Um, and again, where there's, there's some things I can't give details, um, because there's some legal stuff going on, but um, we barely have working plumbing now. We didn't have working plumbing for almost two months. And we had the, the plumber who last came in and did what they call like a hydro flush, uh, said, well, you can use it, but don't use toilet paper. Um, okay. <laughs> That's pretty much like not having working plumbing. Um, and then they're like, yeah, you know, it's only a matter of time. It's going to back back up because you have a collapsed pipe or a pipe that has closed up so much that it's just barely getting through. And so the answer to that is uh, we have to go through the floor to get to the pipe, to fix the pipe, which means tearing up half of my store uh, while this is being done. And obviously, Obviously, uh, that is not going to smell real good, number one. And uh, number two is going to be a big mess. Um, so that's sitting over here on the horizon. Then um, the air conditioning. So many of you know, like we were struggling with like one working air conditioning unit through the summer. It took them forever to replace the units and there has been problems ever since. So they, they did end up replacing three air conditioning units from the time I moved in until now. And uh, only one of those is working. <laughs> so now we're down to only one working 
air con or a heating unit. Uh, and they sent the guy out because obviously it should still, you know, be under warranty. They just put these new units in and the guy comes out and tells me it's our thermostats. Oh, it's the thermostats because we put in smart thermostats. We put in those nest thermostats. He goes, Oh no, these are all, yeah, these are all faulty. So, okay. We have four faulty thermostats, even though, even though he messed with the, the fuses, he messed with the wiring, he messed with all kinds of things uh, that go to that thermostat. But so, so that, so that we're dealing with this now. Um, but another one of the big issues is they rented a large portion of the complex to a nonprofit that uh, is a food bank. They're basically like a free grocery store and it's an amazing nonprofit. I am not knocking what they do, but they have pretty much taken over the parking and uh, it has brought a clientele into the thrift store where let's just say we've had to take out our dressing room because we haven't had a huge theft problem. Um, much like, you know, a lot of retail places do. Um, so it isn't any one of these issues on its own that has brought me to this decision, but um, it's just the multitude and the safety of those who work for me. And ultimately the fact that um, every single month I am just putting more and more and more money into something that is not showing a return. Uh, so I have made the decision to close the good stuff um, at the end of this year, which is, you know, a few weeks away. And um, it was, it was not a decision I came to easily because I'm not a quitter. I am, a, I am like a, I will hold on with grit and make something work. But I have a lot of really, really amazing people uh, that are mentors and coaches and just really, really smart business people around me. And they're like, Danny, sometimes you just got to know. You just got to know when to fold them. And so um, it's just the right decision to make. It does not mean that I'm out of business. Um, it's just been that the online portion of things is, is just more financially stable. And I have a tendency to put too many things on my plate and I can't give my 100% attention to the store because I can't hardly work out of the store uh, anymore um, because the campaign that these people have been on has made it so that I can no longer do whatnots or live sales at the store, uh, which is, you know, that's a huge, huge portion of my business model. And so that was kind of the final straw when I lost the battle with the city and I could keep fighting it. I could go to city council. I could, you know, because legally, technically, they're wrong. They're wrong. Um, I'm not an auction house. I don't collect the money. And it is what it is. So it's a battle that is just, it's not a smart battle for me to get into right now. I can better serve this community and help more people if I can get back to focusing on the things that really work, and that is the online portion of my business. So I will have a very, very expensive warehouse for a while, um, but it's the right decision. It's the right decision. Um, and so that's, uh, that is, that is the sad news. I don't know. It's sad for me. Um, and I know it's sad for my employees and it's sad for those who have rented space at the good stuff. And we don't think, but, um, to those of you, if you're watching and you are one of my vendors, all know already, I've already, you know, obviously I didn't come on here and have them find out this way, but if you are one of my vendors, like we'll be talking, 
you know, there's there's still going to be some opportunities to continue the the good work that we've been doing, you know, with trying to help as many people in this online selling world as possible. So it's one of the things that comes with being an entrepreneur. Um, so some of you are born entrepreneurs and you understand like when one door closes, you find the next opening and you go through it and you build something new. Um, some of you got into the reselling world out of necessity. Like that was like something that you had to do, you know, to put the next meal on the table. And um, I understand that like more than you possibly know. And I want to I want to serve both of those groups of people with what I do and the information that I put out and the and just the collaborative efforts that we can all do as a community. I'm a big I'm a big community girl. <laughs> In case you didn't notice, like I don't think there's a power of one. I, I think we we need all of us like I would not have a YouTube channel without all of you. Right. Like I the it's not just, it's not just about me. Um, so I really am working really hard on what that looks like going forward and all that. But, but this month is kind of my, it's my limbo month now, because obviously there is a process to closing the store. Uh, if you are local, I would encourage you come on by because starting on Tuesday, the entire store is 50% off. And then the week before Christmas, I, nobody else knows this. You guys are hearing this for the first time. The week before Christmas, everything is 75% off. Because, I mean, we have to liquidate. We have to clear it. And then after Christmas, it, we're going to get even crazier. So stay tuned. Stay tuned for all that. Uh, so there's some really, really good deals to be had. We still had... Uh, we still had donations coming in as, as late as last week. So, <sighs> but it's tough. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, unfortunately, so what the city of Las Vegas wanted was money. <laughs> I could have gotten a special auctioneer's license, which I would have qualified for. It would not have been a problem, but they wanted a thousand dollars for said license and they wanted a $25 permit for every single event that was held. And uh, that just that just makes no sense. It just makes no sense. Um, yeah. Do I have four kids? I do have four kids. I absolutely do. <laughs> I, Diane says, can you get another store? Yes. I could get another store. And that's been the rough part is making it. This decision isn't like something that I just came up with. Like this is, I have been agitating over this for a couple of months. Um, actually about, about three months is when I really started looking at what is the best plan going forwards. Um, I have been losing money every single month. There have been days that, because of what they're doing in the parking lot and such, I've had to close the store. There's been no business. There's been no parking, like no parking for my customers. Um, ongoing things like that, which has had me like looking and then like watching it, how well the online part of business does. It's like, oh, I love brick and mortar to each and every one of you who has come into the store and we've gotten to talk and take pictures together. Like that. I will miss more than anything meeting you guys in real life and uh, just putting faces to names, usernames. Uh, it's just, that's been an amazing thing. It's, it's, uh, this is, I was like, I'm not going to cry, but, and then I have wrestled with like, oh my gosh, am I a failure? And I'm just going to say that out loud because I know as entrepreneurs, when something goes wrong, especially us women, that tends to be the place that we go. Oh my gosh, I'm a failure. Like everybody's going to like, I'm going to have no more credibility. 
nobody's going to believe anything I say anymore because I failed. And in talking to um, many amazing people, being reminded that the most successful people have failed at least 17 times. If you want to use the word failed, I hate the word failed. It's not. It's a lesson learned. It is a lesson learned. Uh, and that's what business does to us. That's what being an entrepreneur does to us. It's a. It's sometimes a thankless job. You know, uh, my employees it used to laugh like, you know, they would flat out say like, oh, yeah, we get to go home at the end of the day and not like think about this place. And that's true. Uh, where I go home and sometimes I'm working until midnight, still trying to get that next video out, figuring out, you know, how am I going to make payroll the next day? All of those things, uh, losing a lot of sleep. That comes with the entrepreneur life. But I also know some pretty great things come from the entrepreneur life too. So I am not giving up the entrepreneur life by any stretch. So I am not quitting YouTube. I am not quitting being a reseller. I'm not quitting being an entrepreneur. It is just time to close this chapter. It was fun. It was a. It was an experience, and there was a lot of lessons learned. A lot. I've learned. I have learned a lot about myself. I have learned. Well, I haven't. I haven't perfected this yet. But I've learned that I have to get better about boundaries <laughs> and like. And like how much I give of myself when I don't necessarily have it to give. It's that whole, it's a whole like you have to put your oxygen mask on first before you can put others on. Um, and I just want to address, you know, a lot of people have been asking me about the niche foundation. So this time last year, I was still working towards uh starting my own nonprofit called the Niche Foundation. And that got put on hold to open the Good Stuff Thrift Store. Um, and so that is not gone. It is not gone. It is not. In fact, it's very much still alive in the background. The, the, the foundation is there. But again, it is having to really prioritize and give focus to what needs focus at the time. I know a lot of people have said, how can we have not seen your projects? I have filmed very little of my making the projects. I have made some projects. I haven't filmed it because it, again, it is kind of like my, it's just my little me time. Um, because it's hard, like when you have to think about getting the camera out, making sure the angle's right, making sure, you know, like stopping, going, checking your footage, all that stuff. It's, it's, it's a job. And so there just has to be something in life that's not a job. Um, and I, so I've been enjoying just having a hobby, you know, for a little bit without the pressure of filming everything that I do. So that is still something that I plan to do um, as prioritizing it comes into play because I haven't had a lot of time to do it, to, to be honest, too. I go back and forth and back and forth between the store, between the house, you know, ah! <laughs> so it's time. And I, I'm sorry, I have not been keeping up with the chat. I'm going to have to go back and read the chat. And I will. Um, no nonprofit, go for a ministry, less, less paperwork. That's interesting, Desert Eden Blooms, because a ministry is a nonprofit. I, I'm, I mean, it's still a nonprofit. Okay, let's. I get these comments too about Goodwill not being a nonprofit, and I think a lot of people misunderstand what a nonprofit is. A nonprofit is a business entity, and it's a business entity that, until you get a special uh, classification from the IRS that's called a 501c3, you have to pay taxes on your profits. So basically, once you become a nonprofit through a 501c3, you no longer have to pay income taxes on the money that comes into 
the business and it is a business. Uh, but make no mistake, a nonprofit still has to make money. A nonprofit still has uh, overhead in the form of salaries and marketing and um, whatever, depending on the nonprofit. You know, if it's a dog rescue, they have medical bills and veterinary bills and dog food and whatever those things are. And you have to pay bookkeepers and attorneys. Like, so a nonprofit still has to make money. It's just that it's money has to go towards its mission, whatever that mission is. And then they have a public tax filing status to where, and did you guys know that? You can go look up. Any nonprofit has to have their, their tax information out there. Their financials are out there for all the world to see. It's called a 990 form. Now they can be three years behind in showing that form publicly. Uh, but it's out there. So you could see, you, you get to see where the money goes. So having a nonprofit doesn't mean you don't have expenses. It is a labor of love for nonprofits to do this. Now there's corporate nonprofits such as Goodwill. And then there are private independent nonprofits such as, um, a home for spot or, Potastic friends, positive difference, those that we work with. Um, and they're like they're running on a shoestring and depending on volunteers and, and all of that. But but make no mistake, a nonprofit is there to fundraise, make money to go into their cause. And goodwill is no different. Goodwill has to make money. Goodwill has huge overhead now. We won't get into like executives making big amounts of money. I think that tends to be a little um, where it gets a little skewed. And I'm not in agreement with uh, a nonprofit's executives making that kind of money. But <laughs> that's an opinion. Uh, but they are a nonprofit and they do a lot of good out to serve the mission. And their mission is not to provide cheap goods to anybody. Their mission is to do job training. That is what Goodwill is all about, which is why they have stores so that they can provide that job training at all levels from cashier, stock person, maintenance crew, uh, to management, supervisory up into the ranks. You know, I'm sure, I don't know. Do the, the people at the top at Goodwill, I mean, did they did they move up the ranks or did they like come in? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question. You, that is true. I, I'll just put this on the screen here. Um, I have been through a lot. And I will tell you, um, I very much... I'm not one to take life circumstances as it just happens. I am very, very much about what part did I play in this? Like, how did this happen based on my decisions and what I've done? And um, I, I, I'm not going to share the answer to that. Um, with this last year. Um, but I know, <laughs> I know, uh, what part of it is my responsibility. And, um, and a lot of it has to do that. I do try to bite off a little more than I can chew. And therefore I rely too heavily on others to care as much about what I'm building as I care about it. So that is something I have to correct. I, I have to be able to be the one who can make the decisions, be responsible, be in it 110% with whatever I'm doing. That That's like my big lesson this year. It's my big, big lesson this year. Yeah. And I have, I have truly found out who my friends are this year. Um, I'm going to go too deep into that, but it's, Yes. 
I have some amazing people still around me. Um, you're like Dawn Hudson Vintage. She's right over there. Uh, and so you guys might know that Dawn and I have started something new, something that uh, is getting our 150% focus on top of like we've already got our YouTube channels pretty streamlined. That's that's a routine now. That is not something that we have to change a whole lot in. And this is what I tell. Uh, I, I get this question a lot. Like, when is it time to add another store? When is it time to go multi-channel? When is it time to add another piece of business? And that time is when you've got the first piece running smoothly and it's where you want it to be. And you can now start putting a bit of that focus that you had there over into something else. So, so that is where the Knit Shopping Network came into play. It's something we have been talking about for months and working out like, how do we do this in a way that is best for everyone involved and doesn't have us going broke <laughs> because we are both givers and is a real, real benefit to this reselling and buying community. And so we are still developing as we go, but we have brought the Knit Shopping Network out for all to see. Um, and we're actually having a lot of fun with it. And we have some really big plans with it. Um, we are slowly adding other resellers into the mix as we go. We're going to go really, really slow, stay really, really focused and curate this uh, into something really special for everyone. Thank you guys. I'm going to go back and I'm going to read every one of your comments. I really, really am. I feel rude if I'm like got my eyes over here and I'm like not really like talking to you guys. Yes. But um, yeah. So I don't know about you guys, but I am ready for 2024 to be everything that 2023 was not. <laughs> and I know like I... I talked to so many people that have just gone through it this year. Like this has been a tough year for so many of you. Like, and it just, it's been overwhelming. It hurts my heart. I am, you know, I am very, very empathic and intuitive. And, uh, it, and even, even, even to the people that I know hate me, I, I feel bad for like, I feel, I feel sad, you know, for anybody who's living in such a way that your life is spent trying to hurt others. Like, I, I still have empathy for these people. I know I, I get told I'm crazy for that, like, um, but it's true. So when I hear of others going through hard stuff, man, it just, I hate it. I hate it. So I really, I really want to build something that those who want to be part of this and those who are all about being part of something fun and building something great can be part of it too. Like that is still the premise. The premise is that this is not about Danny and Danny's world or Dawn and Dawn's world. This is about a really, really awesome community of people who have been there for us and we want to be there for you. And, um, just make 2024 really super awesome. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so I'm seeing still the question coming, like, why is the store closing? And the long story short there, it, it's just been, it's been a lot of really <sighs> insurmountable issues. Um, whereas any one of them could have dealt with it on its own. Um, but it's the energy that the fight is taking to collectively deal with all of this is, is absolutely taking away from my family and my free time. And, um, and I've got a birthday coming up where, you know, I really start like, I'm, 
maybe I know a lot of you are like, yeah, you know, women of a certain age and um, men too, but I think women take this more. It's like you start looking and going, these years go fast. How many years do I realistically have to really fill that bucket list, to really have an impact and make a difference and do the things that I want to do in this life? And I also look at the fact that I have an almost 17 year old and an 18 year old and they're not getting any younger. Like my babies are growing up and we're within probably a couple of years of them wanting to leave the nest. And will I regret all of this time I have spent 